Alu came in with some surprising information. Uh, you can say if you gave the information to the team or not, up to you. But while here, Caitlin got a little bit more information on how to get her child into the school. Byroth and your shadow clone jutsu kind of became closer comrades until you completely disappeared. Uh, Relta was pretty much playing with a cat. And Siv was observing the entire situation while King was in the background smoking and drinking. Someone should really talk him. He should really speak with the counselor. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right. Have you said prior? Uh. Halu has stated to Siv in Primordial, I have information but not here, stating the obvious not to speak where your enemy lies. And that's pretty much where you left off. You do know that the next the assault will commence tomorrow, regardless of any information you have, but it could prove beneficial that you have it. So, you guys have a choice to either go to Section 9, uh, relay the information, and then just depart for the day, and then come back tomorrow. Um, or do miscellaneous things until tomorrow happens. You can take and try to take them down now. The only thing is that their primary boss isn't there anymore until tomorrow night. I thought we learned that they were going to locate Mighty Knight within a few hours. I said roughly 18 hours, which would relate to an okay. hour after the assault commences. Which gives you plenty of time. But again, you can do it now, save you the trouble, you just won't have any concrete evidence that the boss was there. Well, any physical evidence. It doesn't seem ideal. Yeah. So, I guess we report to section 9. Okay. Uh, do you guys get Caitlyn out of her chair? Like, wave her over? Because she's still talking to the guy named Frank. Is it going well? It seems to be going well. Rather friendly, in fact. <laughs> um, yes. Keep them. I have no word. Excuse me, Frank. Someone's calling me. No problem. Oh, wait, you're uh, talking under common. Oh, well, sure, no problem there. <laughs> that's, that's just how I talk, dog. Um. Doc, uh, Kitten, we have learned some things thanks to you mostly. It's very helpful. Um. Do you think we should report back and then do anything we need to do before the, uh. <clears throat> Deed. Yeah, I believe we should we should go back. Rest up at the manor. We have a lot to do tomorrow. All right. Hello, we were just stating uh, stating keep it down, as in <laughs> don't give too much information out. Just give mm -hmm. it a Oh, most of you are still in the same position because I forgot to change this map. Oh, that's fine. I'm just going to get rid of this king and replace it with 
Tuxedo mask. So you guys wander back, depending on what you guys do. Entirely up to you, but uh, Hollywood, do you relay the information? Makes a full report to Ramon. Okay. After giving them the information, Ramon basically states the exact same things that you have found out. That they are apparently slave traders, drug dealers, and that they're, they're currently operating and working with classified information as well as classified research material such as the psychic paper allowing them to focus in and hone on things prior to their actual classification of looking into things. Not only that, but they're able to perhaps at a certain point, based off of the information you've gathered, work with it without needing so much of a wide scale as they're fine-tuning and refining this process. As this is going on, he also realized that to do this all in such a high scale, you would need to have someone in high power working with them. And based on the way uh, Hollywood described it, it's also potentially possible that they have connections with the land and are trading, if not just directly importing back into Lynn. Whether officially or unofficially, that's hard to say. But with this type of information and technology, it could prove beneficial to them. Either way, this is a very dangerous situation. How do you learn that it was actually... No, Caitlin learned that it was the Barovian guy? Hollywood. Caitlin learned it was the Barovian guy. Halloween knows somewhat about him. And then Halloween refined it and figured out that it was specifically him with other houses that live here. Right. So Ramon now knows that it's not just someone important. We're mm -hmm. like, we suspect these guys. We heard them. A multitude of them, as well as someone, or perhaps multiple someones in the R&D department. So if they're gonna do this... Uh, actually, I'll just get into game. Alright, that seems about to summarize everything. If we're going to do this, we need to do it and make sure that the main guy is there. That way, when we interrogate him, we get the most out of this. He will likely have the greatest information scope. The others, if we can take them down now, will have something, but not everything. But the choice is entirely up to you. I can have a... He then pauses and then states... I can call in... A squad to assist you. If you need it. Um... I mean... I don't know if you need it per se, but it's always good to have backup. And we hands over a map of the inside of the place. All right, we can work with this. Huh. I can send in some face steppers in as well, making sure that they get in and surprise the area. Yeah, if you have another team available, perhaps you could just 
surveil these men at the bar the whole time. Hmm. I would rather not make it a big scene, but perhaps two members from the area around should suffice. It then calls over Red Eye, then calls over. Ah, let's go with Vern. And relays to look, but do not bother and relay back information. And they head out. Oh, so if it's still in Catch place in like... What? Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Ramon called Red Eye and Vern and told them to scope out the place, make sure that it's still there and anything you can get back. But don't uh, get caught. There were some weird items that I could not sure on, but it would describe them. Also, if it's still in place and they put it in well enough, the door is going should still be wedged open. He gave made mention of they relay back easily enough and they state that the wedge is still there, but if they intend to open the door, there is no going back and they will see someone there, so they have yet to actually go in. So they head back towards the bar where you guys left from. Ramon then it's say nice. uh, to the rest of you. They will keep an eye on them. Great. Yes. That should suffice their coverage, but the rest of you still need to make a choice. This is the information you gathered and provided me. You're working with a certain individual that'll benefit us all. In the end, I can give him temporary protection measures. But overall, we need this to be a success in order for him to go without too much more than a slap on the wrist. So what are your intentions and how many members do you need outside of your own force? You should be able to do this with five additional. If that is what about storming a criminal overlord. If that is what you consider possible, I see no reason. Well we can't go for a number that's too high. Too many people moving around as a single unit would be extremely suspicious. In all honesty, no, an intern should not be involved. However, it is King's choice, ultimately. I am not stating that it will not be dangerous, but it is something to consider. This is field work, and field work often involves danger. That being said, some of these machines, I know vague descriptions about on what you described them to me. From what I can tell, some of them shoot out electric bolts in the area. Another seems to enhance one's abilities if you know the right codes. And the last one, I'm not exactly too sure. Yeah, we dragged King along. You were in the bar, uh, your token was close enough to everyone else, so I just dragged you guys in the same area. This is still part of the... I guess you would consider it mission? And based off of what you've described King to be, if it's still part of the mission, he'd follow along. She'd follow along, sorry. I don't see a how, but okay. Uh, King's not there, I guess.
Uh, Ramon, have you taken into consideration the, um, the uh, mass vigilante angle of this scenario? From what I can tell, this man is simply trying to be a... Well, let's put it this way. The law here isn't exactly too keen on everyone. I'm sure you've had your fill and run in with some people that aren't so keen on non-human folk. You don't say. Indeed. Uh, King, that's what I meant. You would have left with them, but you wouldn't have left at the exact same time. This is some time later, and you would have rendezvoused here. If you don't want to be here, that's fine. I'm just telling you that's probably what you would have done. And so far, this doesn't really break character. Uh, but anyways. Yes, and seeing as some people want to change things, some people take it into their own hands. Some others consider it to be a threat, while others not so much. Unfortunately, some of the lawmen do do so. Is it your opinion that we should go in before him or take his help? As I mentioned before, this is ultimately your choice. I can provide you with backup and the like, but I cannot provide you with your own plan. I can take this into consideration and bring in a wetworks team, but that would exclude you off of this mission. You'd have no idea and have no authority over it. So if you decide to do that, that is an option you possess. Well, I think we'll see this through with ourselves, I think. Yes, we all agree. Mm okay. I agree. <laughs> Around now, 20 minutes later, King comes in. Caitlin, Siv, uh, Halloo, Rauta, Byroth, give him the run give her run the rundown, sorry. Uh, it's the word King. Right now, it's roughly 6 p.m., so this is probably the end of your day, so you need to come up with a plan. If you need backup, backup will be provided. Yeah, we'll have a perimeter set up so no one escapes. Did Hollywood we'll see the guy? No, we didn't. Nobody saw the guy tell so we don't know. Oh no, uh, Relta's right though. The party ended. Well, I mean, you guys left around nine. You guys went to the bar for like an hour. Oh yeah, it's ten. If you guys need to rest, you probably should after this. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, you mortals need to rest. <laughs> Okay, you'll have a five-man perimeter team. If you need them involved, they'll be involved. But basically, there'll be security to make sure no one runs out. Oh, um, I think we missed something. Halu, the glamour sighs as she turns to Ramon. And she says, uh, I'll write up a report about the entire situation later, along with the behavior of the entire group, since I assume that's also part of my job. It's... Part of most of your jobs, really, you're all supposed to work together, tr gain trust, talk with one another, and see if, if you guys missed anything would help along you. So I'm assuming why she was involved. I was, I am here for many reasons, but yes, that is one of them. Right, but... All right, Halibu, if you intend to do this as well, I can provide you with a sanctioned uh, ruby slab if you need one. Oops. Almost dropped my keyboard. Wait, why am I still playing this? This isn't bar music. I mean, section 9 music. 
Age of Steam. So, team, I think the plan basically now is to get a bit of rest, and then tomorrow we will assault the uh, warehouse with the assistance of Mighty Nine. Apprehending him would actually be a very political situation, Ramon, so I'm going to leave that to a higher pay grade than that. Sounds good to me. All right. Uh, sure, Halloween, you can simply write it down. Uh, if you ever need a ruby slab, just let me know, though. And uh, nods and then states, you can make up the plan tomorrow if you'd like, but tonight, well, the night's up to you. You can actually get some rest or just wander about. I suggest not too long, though. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> he goes, uh, yes, I see you've already been provided one. All right, then. You can write notes on there, play games. Um, you can actually send messages if you're in short range into, with people. It's similar to your badge, but not quite so... How should I put it? If you have enough money, many people can get the slab, but not everyone can get the badge. And the badge does a few other things. Oh, really? Like what, Roman? I believe I've already given you the rundown. Haven't I? At a game, he hasn't. He just tells you you can speak with each other, from what I remember. I <laughs> uh, just... No. You have not. Oh, and then he looks towards Halloween. We just tap them in top. Uh, oh, that is quite interesting. You then state, uh, we just basically tap talk. Uh, yes, you can also put it on silent mode, allowing the talking to go into your head. You can also uh, message each other with it, a uh, similar way. You can also go into a cognito mode, allowing silence and a silent spell on the person that is holding it for about a minute. We're still working on the mm. camouflage feature, but should come along soon enough. How do we uh, access these different functions? You just press different parts of the S9 on the badge. He then shows you how to do immediately it. Immediately. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to just immediately start poking the badge. Like, poke, 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 poke. Uh, he basically labels you guys, you guys' badge for like the quick second. And then after like a minute of memorization, you remember what button does what. So, you now know that you can talk just inside of each other's heads. You don't really need to talk out loud. It was just for flavor. Honestly, he forgot. And out of game, I also forgot. Uh, <laughs> you can text with one another with the badge. And it would only show up in your left eyeball or your right one depending on which side your badge is on it's rather convenient to know it's a really weird technology you can cast a silent spell once a day with it would only last a minute but for some of your guys' work it could be beneficial so you wouldn't be heard yeah all clangy clangy over here <laughs> would be setting you all would be setting out around Five, if you need to meet with your contact, perhaps earlier or later, but based off of the information you've gathered, at least before 8 p.m. should the strike commence. Uh, p.m. <clears throat> uh, we know the Mighty Knight is going to strike at whatever time he's going to strike at. It's so we thought it would uh, be best to coordinate our efforts with him. Mm -hmm. He's going to strike at, you believe, 7 or 8. He's going to send a messenger bird or whatever, raven maybe, um, a few hours beforehand. But ultimately... I tell him. Go ahead. I tell him about it. Okay. Ultimately, though, he then states, but your day is done. Make sure you get some rest and do whatever you need to do. Mara goes and sleeps right now. Okay. 
So that's by Ralph Snipe. I would like to. I would like to acquisition a couple of things at the uh, place. Yeah, that's easily done. The item, item repository. Like um, if, any, if anyone needs to get any items, you can get five uh, uncommon and common items. You just need to replace whatever you got unless you're getting the same stuff. Yes, so... That... I'm going to say you grabbed it before you got here because... Uh, while you did correct me, it is around 10 p.m., so the shop would have been closed as you were walking by here. So you just managed to catch them while they were closing the shop, and they handed you your umbrella. Because I forgot how time worked, or at least forgot <laughs> when you guys left. I already got my silk or something. That was different. I don't think I was waiting on anything. I would like to take the uh I would like to take a third level spell scroll from the item repository. Easily done. I would also like the ink to copy down a third level spell. Alright. Uh, the enchanter simply states to you, Halibu. It is a constant spell on the person that holds it, but if you need to cast it on a greater range of people, it will require the amount of spell slots per needed for that spell. And if you have enough spell slots, you can do it as many times as you have. That being said, the holder of the umbrella will constantly have it and will not need spell slots to cast it. And don't know what spell you got, Caitlin, but that's easily done. You just need to replace one of your five items. Unless you get, um, unless you didn't get anything, that's then that's good. I'm gonna be putting back the bat that they gave me, <laughs> <laughs> which is which I'm also gonna unbind as as my contract weapon. Mm. I'm I would like to swap out bot of the pack keeper plus one for a plus two variant. And those will be my two items. Okay. Um, Rauta, is there anything you're doing for the night? Still muted. No, you're not. I was like, wait, am I? <laughs> uh, no. Um, I wasn't waiting on anything. Um, I guess I'm just gonna go rest, but... Yeah, I, I, I want to bring out the map I got last game, but I think I want to wait until we're done with all this. So yeah, I'm just going to go rest for now and put a note with my phone to remind myself once we're done with this mission to show the map to everybody in my group or whatever. Okay. As you go to, sleep, go to sleep, you dream and remember the map that you have in your pocket. Make a mental note and then realize, uh, well, you have a phone now. You can easily just make a memo. So you easily do that to ring around 9 p.m. tomorrow. Like, after the mission's done. Or maybe earlier, who knows. Oh, you, no. also <laughs> you also stole Caitlyn's cat for the night. Aw, little kitty. I just remembered I don't go to sleep. Uh, you can pretend. I'm not. It's not that I I can't go to sleep. It's just that I don't go to sleep because I got to copy down the spell. No, no, no. I get it. But pretending's like you're sleeping and one eye open, just scribbling for the night. Hello, was there anything you're doing? I like to think that Caitlin, on a normal day, just like goes to her room that she's rented or whatever, and just like sits in a chair and turns the lights off. <laughs> just sits there. I'm going to our manor. Yeah. That's where I went, right? Yeah. <laughs> I hope you went there. The cat's not going that far away from me. <laughs> yep. Hallie Woo is putting all of her luggage down, which she's been carrying the entire day in her room before taking a bath and then sleep. 
Okay. I would move you guys all over to the technical apartment you guys share, but it's set up as Caitlin's mansion right now. <laughs> and I think we're just, I don't know, we're just going to sleep and then mm, you get assume. up and I guess we have a day. We got a day of stuff to do. A day of stuff no, thing that we have to do or stuff. other. All right, you're carrying your... Oh, <laughs> you could have left them in section nine. They could have... It doesn't matter. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Easily enough, you take care of yourself. Make sure you're clean. Make sure your stuff's put away. Um, I mean, each of you were given keys to the area, your same living area. But, Halibu, you do have some keys to the castle. Well, you're allowed into the castle and have your own uh, room. If you want to sleep there, that's perfectly fine. If you want to go with the team, that's also okay. Yeah, okay, that's fair. And, King, anything <laughs> you're doing? Uh, King is doing sneaky stuff. Yeah. So King leaves in the middle of the night. Uh, does she go to sleep, though, is the thing? Like, eventually. Does she get her government-mandated eight hours? You can only do six hours, two hours of being awake, though. <laughs> I mean, like, for light activity. Uh, before rest. Okay, so as everyone rises and King uh, returns back to the abodes, um, cleaning up the blood splatters here and there, uh, I guess King has a point of exhaustion. Does everyone just wind up back here or do you do your own things before 5 p.m.? Question, did my uh, did my contact come to, come to the house like I instructed her to? No, because she needs permission to leave that street. Oh, uh, I thought she left to go do that the, the past two days. She sent an invoice, and that invoice takes... It took you guys less than an hour to get there because you had instant transportation. She doesn't have that. So it's going to at least take three days. It's been two and a half. So in three days... So in six days, she'll get confirmation. Uh, no. It takes three days to make a message there, but they are strong enough to get an instant reply back. Send an instant reply okay. back. Ba -ba -ba. By the time everyone else returns to the day, Halibu comes back straight in the morning. Okay. So after getting some rest, some breakfast, meeting up some old friends, attending some classes here and there, Byroth doing some mid-morning close to early afternoon workout and I don't know, Rauta playing with cats, uh, using her new ruby slab as a laser pointer for a while until the battery dies so she needs to recharge it and then eventually it reaches noon and we comes back to section okay. 9. Halloween meeting with... Before I leave for section 9. I'll go on. Meeting with the queen, seeing, telling her how things are going. Basic rundown and returning here. Caitlin. Go on. Uh, I'm going to have one of my... So do I have a male elf in my um, service currently? Uh, Cleans the house and stuff. Currently you're in... Currently you're in Haven. And you are technically a representative of your estate. As well as Noche. And you know that other nobles of their own estates and cities are there. It wouldn't look too fondly if you had an elf as your servant. No, not as my servant. You know how like how we have like a sort of manor thing, and I and I self and I self-employed all the people there. Mm-hmm. 
Well, do I have? I'm asking if I have an elf hired there. You can have one there. It's perfectly fine. I just wouldn't invite the um, noble from the Elven Kingdom. From the Great no, uh, Forest City. No, no, I'm just telling you. <laughs> you can have one there. Just don't invite the head noble of the Elf family. It's all good. I just want some Elf blood before I go, go to work. No, no, no. It's really fine. Um, you drink Kevin. <laughs> Kevin gives you a cup of blood. It's some nice... Capri Sun juice. A little too sweet, but bitter, so it works well. And then you head out for the day. It's not Kevin even new. Does that you're on purpose. Already drinking. He's he, he drinks fruit juice and burnt garlic just to fuck with It's nine o'clock somewhere. <laughs> okay. Uh, how will you do that? She is not surprised based on how everyone else has been acting and her own... I mean, she's the queen, so she gets her own uh, information and we're going. But she thanks you for the information. Nonetheless. Uh, but yeah. Do, 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 do. Gonna drag Caitlyn to the table. I mean, I'd, I'd be there because I'd, I'd just left it over there because the item room. Yeah, 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 I get it. Yeah, you're also given permission to go there, so it's perfectly fine if you do that. Anyways, you all return back to the area right around noon after classes have set and currently King is in the elective hour. So basically, your elective hours. Are your internship, so it's that. Ramon then states, all right, everyone's here, good. Uh, hope you slept well. Is there anything we need to go through before we get started? How do I, how do I turn this thing invisible again? It's still working on that. We only have the silent spell enchanted into it. According to uh, yes, you can basically use message and well, an interpretation of message into your mind rather than the speaker. Do, 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 do you perhaps know the ru rumors of this family's relations with Lynn? Um, yes, I'm afraid. They're not exactly rumors as in found based as they are truth. They were once a noble house from Lynn, but due to some unforeseen circumstances, have been removed from nobility. Based on the information you've gathered, it seems to me that they're trying to get back into their good graces. So, let's try to stop that. Not for nobility's sake or the like, but simply, I'd rather not have such a dangerous foe get into greater, into, let's say, I just don't want him with more power, is the thing. Nothing too noble, nothing too heroic. I just don't like him. Don't like him selling people for property. Don't like him stealing our equipment, which we still need to find. And I basically don't like him. So let's just screw with him. According to Hollywood's map, uh, have there how many doors in and out of this warehouse are there? One asks, and the window. One door to one. Hollywood asks, have there been any reports of drug? Of the drug their market of the drug they market being reported here? There have been some rumors, but nothing concrete. There have been some people looking into it. I believe you're the team before you, or at least the former incarnation of your team, heard rumors about it and I sent in word to the narco teams, but they have yet to actually find anything concrete. 
Yes, the rose dust. If we can find some evidence there in the warehouse, perhaps we can locate via scrying where other points would be. So, above all, this is a matter of importance. But getting back to what Byroth was stating, yes, one window and one door. Thanks to Halloween, we have a way in through the door, but the window is reinforced. And if we do break through it, we'll break through it onto the second floor, and everyone will notice where we come from. So, mission objective is to secure the warehouse and anyone inside? As well as stopping anyone that gets through your own perimeter, which is why I'll send in... Uh, yes, I'll send in them. He calls... He uses his, his own badge, and you assume he does a private message because he doesn't speak anything out loud. He then turns to Halibu as she states, Before I left last night, I heard two individuals partaking in some substance, but I'm not sure what. And then states, That could be the drug we were speaking about, or... Um, this substance known as marijuana. I'm not sure how familiar you are with drugs. But that one is on the low spectrum of things we are concerned about. You're sending in which individuals? Um, as you say that, they arrive. As you were sitting there and conversing and then stating that, it was quite quick and because you're literally in one of the sections of the police department, they were easily able to get there. Yes, of course you are. Um, feel free to answer as honestly as you'd like. I mean, it's not illegal here. At least that drug isn't. Some people use it for recreation. Others use it to alleviate themselves. Uh, <laughs> sure. As this is stated, the six-man squad enters in. You can see that they are different. There are some humans in this group, roughly two, but they themselves don't seem to be normal. From head to toe, we have, uh, from what you can tell, a Yang Ti pureblood, a high elf drow? It's hard to tell, but she has a mixture of drow heritage, as well as high elf features. A human with red hair, but a, what appears to be a spear with three points to it. A trident, if you will. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Halibu would know. Byroth would know what a trident is. Oh, yeah. The human to the far south it seems to have chains wrapped around her arms, but the chains seem to have a black manifesting aura around them. A Yang Ti half-blood with circulating blades around her. And... You're not sure what this is. It looks like a Yang Ti. It looks like a human, but not quite either. You don't believe it's a mixture of both? But it does seem to have similar features. He then states to them, All right, thank you for coming. All right, team. This is one of the Wetworks teams that you'll be working with. They'll provide you with surveillance. Is there any questions? <clears throat> Your chains are fascinating. What do they do? Oh, the chains, they are all right. Uh, they're known as living binding chains. They manifest themselves similar to the way mimics do. But this is somewhat sort of, I suppose the way I would put it is a familiar. 
They act as my weapon as well as so, my familiars. In tow. More magic than artifice. Mm, sort of. It's more like an organic living metal at this point. Ooh. This is interesting. Perhaps after the mission we will speak more. Uh, sure. Um, how do we then state? May we get a rundown of the fighting styles, if you don't mind? Um, the one on top then states... <laughs> All right, then, sure. Name's Hubert. I am a rogue slash washbuggler. Good with the blade, good with the sword, and good with the long-range bow. If you need anything else more, just let me know. You can call me Hugh. It's a lot shorter. A lot more easy to familiarize yourself with. So you have Hugh's rundown. He is a rogue swashbuckler. The next one is Viola. Ba -ba -ba. Looking at her character sheet. She seems to be just a typical swordsman. I'm carrying two, um, from what you can tell, Chain, not chains, bleh. Uh, dark hued rapiers with a strange chain wrapped around. Oh, it is chain wrapped around the hilts. They're not in the same regard to the other one, but they seem to be interesting. She's a fighter with a subclass known as Swashbuckler. Du -du -du. Barda is the next one. She is a rogue. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's different. My bad. Uh, she's a ranger slash rogue. With the added bonus known as hide within sight. Which is weird. We don't know what that means, but she simply states it to you as hide within sight. She can easily just disappear as you're looking at her. The one with the chains is known as Fawn. She is a sorceress slash warlock. She just uses magic and her chain familiar. Next one after that is the Yang T half blood, known as Donna. She possesses magical abilities with swords, so you, you believe her to be, or at least she tells you to, that she is. Huh? For some reason, I have here magic swords woman. I don't think I finished her class. I know her character sheet's done. What did I mean to put Sword that? Mage. Sword Mage. Oh, I wrote something dumb. <laughs> yeah, she's a Sword Mage. The last one appears to be a Barbarian. Also known as a Spell Sword. Yeah. He goes by Nara. He simply is a rogue. But from what you can tell, he's a high-powered rogue. Um, roughly 8th level. Uh, yeah, Soul Knife. She technically does have... That is technically that. Uh, Donna then states, uh, Yes, I have various blades that are bound to my soul. That's why they circulate around me. Uh, think of them as third, fourth, and fifth hands. So you have bound actual metal knives to your soul? Yes. She doesn't know how to respond to that. Fascinating. <laughs> Hugh then states, <laughs> All right, that takes care of introductions, at least on our part. If you'd like to give your names, feel free to. If not, that's A-OK. -okay. Again, we're on a wet works team, so if you meet us again, we're either working together or 
He stops. Yeah, uh, we get it. You kill people. We kill people too. Hmm. Fair enough. My name is Caitlin. Pleased to meet you, Caitlin. Pleased to meet you, Halloo. I use swords and magic. Viola then states, I use swords and Fawn and Den over there use magic. Simple and easy enough. There's not much to me. Fair enough. Hugh then states, <laughs> Oh, Viola, uh, such the kidder. Way too sociable. If you say so, Hugh. <laughs> uh, that is a joke. Right. Ha. Uh, ha. Huh. So, you guys know what you're doing tonight? Oh, yes, pretty much. We're going into the warehouse. So, we are to kill yeah. anyone that tries to exit while you're talking it. Make sure if they leave, they don't leave for long. And if they run back in, we'll I'm hold them from staying and going any out any further. Capture would be better than kill. Uh, we still need a lot of information from this. Oh, that's a good thing to know. We were just out. I killed them. Isn't that right, Nara? Blech. Isn't that right, Nara? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Always a silent type. So, everyone ready? Oh, wait, you said later tonight. So we have, like, five, seven, eight hours to kill? 5 p.m. Oh, starts. so, like, four and a half hours to kill? About. Excuse me. All right, then. Um, he then scribbles something down and then... I guess he just throws it on the table, right where Caitlin was sitting. Alright, then there's our badge network. If you need to contact us, we'll be good and in ship shape. Otherwise, we'll just be in the perimeter of the warehouse. So, good luck to you. If not, then try to survive. Uh, happy hunting. No, oh, you're the same. As they head out. I so, like to turn in my third level spell scroll for Tiny Hut. Okay. To get the fourth level spell scroll for Divination. Okay. Mm and the ink that corresponds to that. Level spell. Okay. That is what I shall be doing at this table while while we wait for those hours to pass by. Okay, unless someone actually wants to do something, we can just skip time and we're there. So how many hours exactly pass by? Four, and then um, the... Well, now nah, i just spoil it. Four, and then the uh, familiar shows up giving you the message from... Mark, and then after that, you will head out. So I need eight hours to, com to completely transcribe the spell. Divination. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we ask? And he states, well, Ramon states, since you're part of Section 9, if you want to just outright procure one from our department, It'll simply cost you an even 3,000 gold. Outside of a department, it'll cost you 5,000 gold. It is an expensive item, but we can also just allow you to have one, so long as you procure it from our inventory items. You don't necessarily have to give it back, but if you want to use an other item, you will have to swap out. Hallie was right beside me. I'll just be like, no, I have a bag of holding. I just got it from chest over there. You only have to pay for it if you lose it. Um, Halloween, from where you're from, bags of holding come in various shapes, sizes, and variety varieties. You know them. They come in clutches, purses, bags. Um, 
people sometimes use them for grocery shopping. People sometimes use it um, after they make large purchases and don't want to come back or stuff like that. They go from around 800 gold to 1,000, which is still expensive, but nowhere near the price that he's stating. Also, Widow Kitty's not a Widow Kitty anymore. <gasps> Hallelujah. Kitty. Quite taken aback at that person. Yes. Yes, I'm afraid so. Go on. What form taketh little kitty then? Widow Kitty's an owl. <gasps> How adorable. Aw, tiny Hootsworth. <laughs> Uh, Ramon then states, yes, I'm afraid, still 3,000 gold. If you'd like to just rent one out, you can do so. If you need to switch out items, though, you will need to return it back. So it's ultimately up to you. Remember, you can loan, we can lend you five uncommon and under items. If you decide to take a, mm, actually, what level are you guys at? I think we're at... 10 now, yeah. yeah, you should be 10. So you do now have this option. If you like to take out a rare item, it'll cost you two uncommon items. But nothing beyond that. So you can take out a singular rare item, and it'll cost you two of your uncommon items. Cool. That being said, as I mentioned before, do you guys do anything? If not, we can just skip. Well, I need to spend um, one hour swapping out the familiar. So I've spent three three of my hours transcribing. Yeah, that's fine. I also just spent four hours down at uh, section three being like, hey, have you guys, have you guys ever thought about like mechanizing armor and like being filled with armor? I don't think you've ever been in Section 3 before. Or is it 5? Is the R&D one? I forget. Uh, 5 is the one you've made connections with prior. Mm -hmm. 3 is one you know as the Biological Research Department. Bioweapons Department, yeah. really. Yeah, it's 5 I want. Then. Yeah. So what was that you said? I'll just, like, kind of bum around there for a few hours and be like, hey, have you guys looked at mechanizing armor? I'm like, what are you guys up to? Okay. Uh, no, nah, nothing much. Simply just working around, still looking for the... Ah, still waiting on the um, budget to come back and the procurement of other assets from Noche. You know, stuff like the, the do to do. Uh, Claire just looks at you and goes, So, um, how are things? Uh, they're good. I want to uh, propose research into mechanizing armor. That's why I came down. Cool, cool, cool. Talking. And everyone's all right. Um, Rauta, um, Nesmin. Mixy, uh, ba, ba. the other one, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Sigvold, yeah, he doing okay? Actually, last we heard, Mixie and uh, Nesmin were in danger. We dispatched a team, or Section 9 dispatched a team to look on them. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, and Sigvold is uh, relearning things at the camp, I think. Oh, that's I... always good. Make sure you pay him a visit. Ah, so much work, right? Maybe one. Mm. Anyway, look into mechanized armor. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay. You just speak with their blacksmith for the room and that and just ignore her. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> okay. 
Hello, you're looking through the items. Again, you can just look through the actual item list and pick stuff out. Mm, King, anything you're doing? Hathi Boo requires one bag of gold. Da 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 da. Mm, okay. King, you're just helping out from time to time. Sometimes someone needs a hand carrying or lifting stuff, so you help out there. Sometimes they need. Uh, you help out some of the alchemists in the area. You help out Verizia, Archibald, with their explosive equipment. Um, ba -ba. Yeah, that's pretty much the only people that need help right now. So you help them out, you help other people, then you just come back. Or not. Do, do, do. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> King does seem to be the whole loner type. Unless needed to be. Alright. So you just help out, but don't say a word. Then after four hours, everyone basically is back on the table. Now the owl sits in top of sits on top of Zerata's head because that's what it looks like it's doing. And then you get... Da, da, da. She's got horns, man. Come on. And then you get a strange bird coming out of nowhere, dropping a scroll, and then just bolts out of there. If you guys try to do anything, you can. Otherwise, it'll just Strange leave. bird. Strange bird. It looks like a raven, but it looks to and appears to have a strange colored hue to its feathers. As if it has... Not a rainbow-like hue, but a pearlescent view, uh, much like a crow. All right, I'll cast command on it and I'll tell it to land. Hmm. Okay, it lands. Uh, does anyone else think this bird is weird? Hello, bird. You can understand me, right? Why are you here? Squawk, 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 squawk. Does anyone speak bird? Um, Did someone just point at Rauta if she spoke bird? <laughs> I, 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 point, I pointed at Hoots in here. Oh. Yeah, technically. Technically. Yeah, technically, animals understand Byroth, and so do plants, but he has no special ability to understand them. The mm. problem is, if this is, a, if this is a familiar, it's not a beast anymore. Uh, it's technically not a beast anymore. As Halibu yes. states, I wish I could. Mm, you know what? It's familiar to familiar, so I'm just going to say Hoots Singer is able to interpret. Um, As you... As Byroth asks, hey, what are you doing here? Hootsworth gets a translation. Ah, oh, greetings and salutations. I am here to deliver a missive from my master. That's all it says. Caitlin. And who is your master? Ah, oh, good sir, Mark. And good morrow to Mark. Ah, yes, indeed. Oh, well, it's embedded in that scroll. Inscribed, if you will. I'm afraid I do not know the common tongue, so I cannot read. I start looking at the scroll. Okay. Uh, the scroll reads, Right around five is when I'll begin preparations. Around six is when we'll, we'll, we'll make our assault. You can come here and give word, or you can prepare on your own and strike at six. Hmm. 
If he says that that he'll be he'll be preparing at five and he'll, and he'll strike at six. Should we truly coordinate our efforts with him? He's asking. If, he also asked if we wanted to coordinate. I think we should. I think this is wise. It would be reckless of us to not fully understand the situation that you got. Take us back to your master. But I'm sorry, I do not have the command to do so. He says that he can't do that. Command only lasts one turn, six seconds. No. Yeah. He's also just speaking because he's polite. But he then states, but if you like, I can fly back and you can just follow. I can't exactly take you there. <laughs> sure. Excellent. I will go at a meager walking pace as he begins to fly into the air and just leaves. Heading towards the harbor where you know where to go. I get on my dark pegasus and equip my armor. Shadowing away my book and whatnot. Okay. Do all of you follow? Because it is close to five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All of you head out into the area of the harbor where you see the strange raven owl like bird. Not owl. Raven crow like bird land on top of a strange sleeping pirate. If I can find the dumb map. There it is. I assume Halliwoo is gliding on her uh, newly acquired broom of flying. With the hat of disguise. Is this the sailor that uh, looks weird and nobody talked to? Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's funny. Huh. While you guys are heading out, I assume King dips for a quick second and changes. Come on, King. Learn trial by fight. If you want to stay back, stay with the perimeter team. Uh, Ramon did state you don't have to involve yourself in this, but this is part of your internship, stating that this is field work. If you want to take field work into consideration, you may, but this involves danger. So if you decide not to, he'd understand. So you won't get deducted any criteria points and just to restate to the team our objective is to capture the people in charge right yeah right? at least that's what you made it okay. and Ramon stated so it's a good thing you stated that to the wetworks team or else they would have just killed Okay. Okay, so one way in team, we yeah. should have people on the perimeter. Uh, what Pokemon? King looks at uh, who went viral? The other male? There's no other male here. Um, with the most unamused expression. She says she is not a killer, nor would it be wise for her child to be associated with targeting a group that will hunt her down. I assume him is Ramon? Probably. Hmm. <laughs> uh, 
That is true. <clears throat> and knowing Halloween's disguise capabilities, it is possible. In the oh, yeah. item inventory, yeah. there is. And this coffee pot, nice. Technically, <laughs> technically it's a converted um, endless flask of water. I think I forget what those are actually are called, but yeah. Yeah, I forget what it's called, but I have one. Just the regular from my cup. Mm-hmm. So, does King just want to, like, observe with the perimeter group, or not be there at all? Yeah, that is the question. They, I mean, King, you were there. They restated instead. Good to know that we won't kill, simply capture. They were going to kill anyone. And Violet's just like, wait, wait. But if King doesn't want to, that's perfectly fine, I suppose. Okay, if that's how King sees it, I guess you just chill out. Or we'll go to... I mean, there are night classes. You can attend night classes. But that's for you to decide, I suppose. So, everyone says... Peace out, and heads towards the harbor, where you see the Raven Crow bird just land on this pirate dude, who's been asleep this entire time, from what you can tell. Oh my god! <laughs> the bird. Do then... I recognize him at all? <laughs> you recognize him as being the one of the main people you guys never spoke about, as the bird goes underneath the hat. Caitlin's got a. Land the dark pegasus and start walking over to him. Being real careful around the water. <laughs> Once up there, she puts her hand on the sleeping man's shoulder. Okay. The bird pecks at your gauntlet and then it goes back into its hat. I start to feel his face just in case. You feel... No, you're wearing gloves. You just feel I'll take it off. okay. You feel a weird waxy substance on your hands. You don't think this is an actual face, more like a mask. As you keep just rubbing the eyelids, the eyes get in there real deep. You hear a familiar voice state, "Can you please stop that?" I cast Pressure's Agitation to clean my hand and put, put my gauntlet back on. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you know this. You know this voice is Mark, so I'm just gonna paste his image over the pirate. Oops! As the boat accidentally got too close. How do would how do you would be sailor? All right. It looks like you all made it. Uh, looks like no. He only knows that he only knows of you guys. He doesn't know what King looks like. So yeah. All right. Looks like all of you made it. Everyone ready, or are we going to have a plan? Either way, I'm um, just go on. There is only one main entrance, which we think we might have one more, and one window. Other than that, it is pretty secure building. Good to know. I only knew of the doorway myself. 
looked interesting, and I did have this prepared just in case we weren't able to break in. He then shows you what appears to be a strange, almost parasitic-like insect, but it's metallic. I'm guessing this will unlock the door. Yes, rather burrow into the lock itself. Um, I suppose technically, Byroth, since you're a nomad-like being, you would know what these things are. At least I've heard of them. They don't. Okay, these are known as quite literally burrowers. They can burrow through metal, through concrete, through steel, through rock. It all depends on which type of environment they grew up in. Oftentimes, they need to do this to find food, water, depending on the environment. He, you're not sure why this one's metal though, which is weird. Uh, route. Know they made. They have these in metal. However, it does see that it has a strange resemblance to her map for some reason. Uh, who knows? Fascinating. I did not know butterwares came in metal. We use them to set logs in stone. They can be used that way, yes. But looks like you don't need this one. Uh, he then put it in a jar and then put it in his pocket. Oh, wait. Um, so. Unless you haven't figured out a way to enter inside. I could still use it if you'd like. The Hollywood here, who is handing the map to you, um, uh, has, uh, well, yesterday she propped the door open. <laughs> We're not 100% sure if it still is. Actually, hang on a second. I'll tap my uh, badge in brain mode. And ask the two guys who are on patrol, like what, uh, who are watching the five dudes, what they've seen. Okay. You hear Hugh state, uh, nothing yet. They seem to be collecting boxes inside boxes. I, besides that, nothing else. The rest of them are still patrolling the area. Uh, they actually wave to you. Well, they wouldn't do that. Uh, they don't wave to you on top of the roof. Uh, but you feel like on the back of your head or something, someone like looking at you. I mean, they have badges. They could just be like, hey. Yeah. Some of them go, hey, stop. Stop calling me. You're not sure who that <laughs> is. You assume. <laughs> Mark then states, all right, thank you, Miss Hallowell. All right, that should suffice. I'm not sure what this uh, metallic contraption does, but from what I can tell, this one shoots out electricity, and the other one, I'm not sure what it does. But beyond that, everything I can provide you has already set in place. He then throws each of you what appear to be candy. He then states, if you eat it, it'll grant you a Spring of Inspiration will allow you to use two Inspiration D6 dice whenever you see fit for the next hour or so. But you can only use two and only have one for each of you. And so this candy gives us two D6 on any roll? On any roll or any uh, split apart roll. So you can use them on one roll or you can use one on one and one on the another. This is pretty kind of you. Okay, let me just put the candy in her bag of holding. Alright. And anyone within 15 feet of me will have the ability known as Bless set upon them, which allows you to roll 1d4 on any saves. Or attacks you do. You were a supportive ally. Beyond that, I just have myself prepared and ready to attack. So, team, one way in, one way out. Um, 
we just storm the castle? That was my initial plan. As soon as the boss gets inside, we attack. Should we perhaps send in a, an advanced scout, as it were? We you can, feel comfortable but... doing that, Hollywood? Hollywood's capable and possible, but as soon as you open the door, people will likely know ah. you're inside, and then the uh, plant would probably only be able to open the door once more, and then it breaks. So if you're going to do that, you got to make sure that you get inside somehow before the boss gets inside. Okay. Maybe not the best thing. I don't know. Could yeah, be. How do we still typing? Right? Mm -hmm. I thought you could turn it invisible. She had the door propped open, didn't she? I'm sorry, Hallyu, I didn't think you could take them all on. I thought you would turn invisible and then... I don't know. It was a bad idea. Mm. Uh, he then states... It is an interesting proposition, but nothing concrete would come about it. Correct, it is very cost effective. So if huh I was planning on this in case I needed to leave and make sure I wasn't caught, but it can turn us all invisible for up to a minute. Uh for how long, sorry? A minute. Catch that. So One if we minute. go in now um, we can disperse split apart and just lie and wait inside. Find a cozy place to sit down until the boss arrives. I'll let you know right now, my plan is to use whole person on the boss and however many people stand near him. And then I believe I have whole person as well, don't I? Well then this okay, seems like then? a plan. We, we hold the before he even gets inside. No, once he enters inside, you cast hold person on him and we take out anyone that's still moving. That way he can't state if we take him down before he enters inside. What are you talking about? I was just simply moving around the harbor area. There would be concrete evidence that he was inside. And had at least some knowledge of what's in here. Okay. All right. Shall I cast Did it then? Did bring handcuffs? Uh, Sif Sorry. Are they... Hand you handcuffs. Um, I bought about five of them. I thought you would all bring some. You're kind of bad at this, Sif. That's okay. fair. Well, we have rope. You can also use rope. That's perfectly fine. What's your chain? Okay. okay, so she gives um, Caitlin, Halawu, you, Brauta, each handcuffs. handcuffs. Okay. I give mine to Byra. <laughs> Byra, you know how to casting this whole casting this whole person. Okay. I've also got old person. We've all got old person. Uh, we Siv doesn't have old person. Okay, so do you guys? Go invisible and go in. Yeah, let's do everyone. it. Does he, does he include my familiars? He includes your familiars. Okay. Then I guess Dark Pegasus and Hoot Singer shall go in as well. Wait, do you bring your horse in there? Okay, wait, so our plan is to go invisible, go in, and then wait for and the boss to show up. Shows up. Yeah. Go invisible, go in, hide. And wait for the boss to enter inside. Then, as you guys stated, hold person, hold person, hold person. Take out anyone that is trying to leave or attack you. Leave the boss to me. The next one casting hold person. 
As you're invisible okay. and go into stealth, you would have advantage. His plus four. And your dice if you choose to take it. Yep. I, I am concerned about the hiding part. I'm very, very bad at that. Okay. I could... Um... If I can get some assistance with hiding, I'm quite bad. I cast invisibility at fifth level. You don't have to. Byroth can't hide worth a damn. Okay. Um, that the then. Hour. I could also wait outside for the boss and then cast my own six second invisibility to walk in right behind him. No, um, Kaelin use pretty much greater invisibility at that point. So, with two casts of invisibility, I suppose you would have actual advantage instead of just a flat roll for you. Probably, like, Caitlin, you, what's your proficiency? My stealth proficiency? Uh, you're just your proficiency. Four? Um, and a plus four by Caitlin helping you. All right. And then also, because I'm not going to fucking screw this up, when I go in the first time to look for a hiding spot, I'm going to cast the badge silence on myself. Mm, at that point, you're just hid. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a ghost. Yeah, so you just find a... Cost is concentration, right? It's fine. So... I mean, once he enters inside, you can lose that concentration and hold person. So everyone find a corner of the map to just hide yourselves in. Hello, you rolled a 17. You can roll again if you'd like. But once you find the location, everyone except for Byroth, because he got super helped and then helped himself, uh, roll stealth with advantage. However, Byroth rolled stealth for Rauta. Okay. Man, just a Okay. Okay. Not great. Uh, you 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 roll you roll the you roll the two with your natural two bonus theory of things. You rem remember you have advantage. I remember she has advantage. Nobody else was using advantage. Oh, Halibu did. Because they didn't turn it on. Twelve. Twelve plus four. That's sixteen. Also, a dog mom, I'm going to use my, my next action with the Rod of the Pack Keeper to refill one of my Warlock spell slots. Okay. How about you rolled pretty well, so you can pretty much just hide anywhere on the map, even the second floor, which is the weird coloration around the area. Uh, that's fair. Um, then you'll go around the corner and be between Mark and Rauta. Byroth, you can hide yourself whenever you'd like. Mark does look strong, and out of game, in game, you know he's quite strong. But technically, if you're going by looks, Byroth does look more menacing. Sorry, can I brain link to save? Like, are you just going to hide? Um, you need backup. I... Saves all the way in the corner. I'll be fine. Now then, okay. uh, Mark's. Yeah. Oh wait, Mark doesn't have a bunch. Um, he just relays this to Halibu, and then Halibu relays this back to you guys. As mentioned before, this one shoots out electricity. This one I'm not too sure. Um, that one, Ramon stated that it is able to enhance your static abilities, 
if you know the right passwords. And both of them stated, however, this one I'm not too sure. This good thing all of us have really high intelligence. Right? Yeah, this one just looks like a metal safe, though. So after some time of just nothing really going on, you guys wait and wait until... I'm the candy while we're waiting. Okay. The candy lasts for a while, so it's perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, same. So I see you eat some candy and then just wait for a little bit. The guy doesn't seem to be in a rush to get there. After all, it is his own establishment, so why would he be? You guys get bored, and if you choose to eat the candy now, you may do so. I'm guessing he's not going to just come in here alone, so I'm going to be grabbing his entourage with my level enhanced powered hold person. It's around 6.30, but yeah, let's say 7. You can hold action. Honestly, you guys have a surprise round once he enters inside. Okay. Just for this talk on brain, so... There are a lot of guys in here, actually. You, how many do you think will run and just kill this guy? Or not kill, capture. capture. Delete. It's Who are you talking to? Oh, he, just the, the squad over the silent mode. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's 6pm when it started. It's been about an hour since it's commenced. Around that time, everyone does or does not eat. And it's 7 now. But once it hits 7.05, he comes in alone. He seems panic, frustrated, and barricades the door shut. Everyone get around me now. I don't know who they freaking... Bleh. I don't know. Could it be Benny Twitch? I don't know. I'm going to say it anyways. I don't know who the fuck they are, but they've been attacking me ever since they got in the street. If they dare try to get in here, blow their heads off. Do you guys get closer? Do you wait for do them the to get closer? Do the message oh, I say to everyone, not yet. Wait till, wait till the people get around them. Okay. I'd like to silent mode to the perimeter team. Uh, what, is there been any activity? You could say that. To coerce him in, we shot at him. Well, at his men. Ugh. They're stunning shots, so they'll be perfectly fine. Uh, okay. Team, should we go? Uh, it's people Not around yet. him yet? Round four. Not quite yet. Remember, no. non lethal, non lethal. Now. Rope now stamp. Okay. Break, break, break. Okay, I'm gonna be casting hold person at fifth level. Cause casting spells at a lower level is just not my style. <laughs> I also wanna cast hold person on wh whichever guys that Caitlin's not casting on. I, I wanted to be cast on the on um. The main guy is the man Mark in red. Hold on. So this one, which goes to this mm. one, that one, and that one. Okay. So those so, four people are people I'm casting whole person on. All right, wisdom saving for throws. Out, uh, at every. Mm -hmm. There are only two of them. On the, uh, on held, at this point. Okay. Well, let's see. They just go with one person and the other and the other. So. Failed. 
past probably past actually what is your save dc 21 <laughs> barely passes and fails Everyone marked in blue is now held. Uh, we also, unfortunately, you cannot quite reach the main boss. Oh. If she upcasts it, she can through the bouncing feature. Oh, yeah, through the bounce. So if you cast it at. at least What's the range? Level. 60 and additional 30 on top of that for every level. Yeah, I'll cast it at a higher level. Mm. Right. I Third mean, or fourth. you hit yourself, so I'm just going to say you're behind this box instead of where you were. So it's fine. Okay. Uh, fourth. So you can just hit him at yeah. that level. Keep I'm in mind, me and Rialta are, uh, we actually have bonus fourth level spells because of the laughing god. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, plus four. So, we'll cast it. Oh, man. Oh, that sucks. Uh, enter a spell save DC is only 15. Oh, he just barely failed. He got 14. Nice. And it's fourth level, so there's an additional two guys. That would, uh, cool. Uh, I'm going to save the girl next to him. Passes. And the next one passes, but barely. So they're still fine. Anyone else yeah. taking the surprise round action? Uh, yeah, if I see that, I'm going to dash as far as I can. I already moved once, but I guess I'm going to try and dash and cuff some, you know, cuff them. So I'm going to spend the rest of my movement dashing. Okay. Movement and action. Or rest my turn. I already moved. You already moved? I don't see you. I'm in the corner beside Caitlin. Oh, I thought you meant uh, towards him. Yeah, I, I moved. Now I'm going to dash. Oh, okay. You might want to put up the turn order thing so you can... Oh, One, I was just waiting for you guys to finish your surprise round actions. But sure. Okay. Oh, that sucks. Just set of range. Alright, that's Rauta, the Tonowu. King's over in the streets doing something. Baral got as close as possible. Caitlin did her bounce, bounce, ping, ping, hold person. Mm. Mark rushes over. Move those. So I can move 30 feet over. And gets up to here. Descending I order. Eleven point four one. I put on tiebreaker. <laughs> so I guess it, does that just always win because mine is flat? <laughs> you could always put on your tiebreaker. <laughs> All right, NPC group. NPC. Main, NPC main, so and these three are held by NPC one boss. Person, right? Everyone marked in blue is held. The boss is it's currently held by Relta, though. That's Dark Pegasus' turn. I'll take the dodge action. They all roll. 
all my NPCs rolled pretty average. Descending. So, Dark Paces takes a dodge action. As you all somehow make way and get in front of him somehow, I don't know how you did it, but somehow you came up with a plan and enacted it perfectly. With the help of Mark. Immediately, this woman bolts into your direction and can only go as far as Mark. But she is livid. Not as if um, she cares about the man, more as if you're involved and you're ruining her paycheck. The man that was beside her goes, Ooh, bad timing. Uh, pff, guess I have to help. And walks over to this machine. Wasn't this a surprise round? You guys already did the surprise round. It's now actions, and they rolled higher than most of you. DC 15 on Rialta. Mm -hmm. He has a plus four. <laughs> oh. It's a good thing it, it ends his turn with that, though. Well, he looks mad. <laughs> NPC group. Boop. Boop. And boop. Yeah, none of them save. But a lot more people get closer. Halibu. Polymorph. I'm just going to polymorph the bot. What's your DC <laughs> there, Halloween? Into a rabbit. DC 17. Okay. Let's see, Wisdom. Oh, it's like one of his better stats, too. It's a good thing he's not proficient in it, though. He turns into a yeah. rabbit. <laughs> Symbolized by this eye. Cute. Actually, I think I have a rabbit token. If not, I should. And, and, uh, and Hollywood tells us all not to hurt the rabbit. Okay. I don't know if she does. She does her own thing. Okay. Eh, up to you. I'm just going to say this raccoon stands in as the rabbit. I have plans for that rabbit now. <laughs> mm. If we hit I mean, the rabbit, then it turns back into him. And yeah, out of character. In any case, um... Hoot Singer. Yeah. All right. Have we then simply states, "Don't hurt the rabbit." Ralto also agrees, nodding. Now that it's an animal. <laughs> Hoot Singer will come in and dive in to grab the rabbit. Oh, okay. Uh, does Hootsinger have cuffs or ropes to cuff him? Hootsinger's just gonna do what a regular owl would do and try to hunt the rabbit. Alright, this would be a grapple check, so whatever it's He's so athletics good is. At those perfection. Did you actually roll a negative three? I not one to get a minus four. Alright. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's athletics, what? No, it'd use acrobatics. So, plus two, because it's a rabbit. 20. Oh my god. So does this rabbit just, like, judo throw an owl? No, the rabbit just jumps, 
kicks the owl in the face, and the owl just is ashamed. You got shame the damage. Slide. The owl will slide shame. back up to the opposite side, but pretty much the same spot. No, the no. rabbit saved last turn. At the end of the boss's turn. Mm -hmm. Man, if it was hell, it'd be so bad for him. I can't Get pick up my sword. Do you pick up the rabbit as well? Not far. I'm not close enough. Okay. But what I, I will do is take out my sword. It's a nice, pretty red sword. I like it. So, I'm going to use this nice and shiny sword to non-lethally start attacking this paralyzed target. Alright. I'm, I'm rocking wand and sword now. We don't I, do shields out here. I don't see how you would miss because they're being held, so go ahead and roll damage. Oh, they're, they're paralyzed. I am going to... to I mean, unless you were blind, game. you would have a hard time missing. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> Feels bad, dog. So, that's what the damage. And advantage hit that person. Yeah, that hits. Are they still what is known in this magical world as called a conscious? Yes. But not by much. I don't, I, like, I don't think I like that. As you swing into their body, their soul, their minds, these are just grunts, so they only have so much health. Her max total was 30, so with 19 plus 16 plus 5 plus 1, she just goes down. If you decide to kill her, it's up to you. But remember, everyone stated that this was a bag and tag. No, bag and tag is death. Uh, restrain and maim. <laughs> That's why I went with non-lethal. Okay. I forgot you said that. That's my turn. Bye, Roth. Ah, Vyra still can't quite make it to the bunny. Unless scooping up a bunny and... I, I think I have a regular backpack. If you actually manage to get to the bunny, you can use a bonus action to cuff it. You would just need to make a uh, grappling check, technically. Okay, so if I use my movement and then my action to dash, I can use my bonus action to cuff the rabbit? Yes, which, which basically means um, grappling check, so your athletics versus its athletics or acrobatics. Okay, done. I really hope I'm stronger than the rabbit. If you're just trying to scoop it up, Halloween, yeah, it would take an action, depending on if you're trying to restrain it. Wait, that's the same thing yeah, I, Byroth is doing. You can, you can put it in a bag no, of I'm, I'm fully aware that I do not want to put it in a bag of bowls. I no. wanted a regular leather bag. I'm just going to say scoop. I can cuff it. Yeah. Scooping requires just a bonus action. You just need to make an athletics check. <clears throat> All right, athletics check. Here we come. Da, 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 da. Now 24. it's bunny plus two jump. Ah, oh, 16. Oh, yeah, you don't want that to happen. Immediately, you just cuff the bunny. You grab its two paws and cuff him. If it ever turns back into a human, it will be restrained. <laughs> and you technically have hold of him, so you just have him in your hands. Okay. Railta. Right. We are okay. surrounded by bad guys. Um, none of them are held by you. A few of them are held by Caitlin. No. Okay, so how many more bad guys are not restrained? The ones around you are roughly two that are not withheld, and then two others that are held, but still alive. Conscious. The technology. And then this really strong woman heading towards Mark. 
after three and a half years, it'll load and you'll be able to make your decision. The blue dots on this map are the people that are in the held person. Those are held by me, so your concentration slot is freed up. The red dot right there is Polymorph with the raccoon on. People from the south are coming towards us. You can see, you can see the um, sieve is right behind the jukebox. I guess I'm gonna try to restrain whoever else is not restrained by just okay. casting hold person again. Casting hold the person, and then you can target a second additional one. You can choose. There are. Yeah, three people it? within your range. The main cast to the second, third, or fourth level. The... Um, I'll do fourth level again. Okay. Um, I would recommend the boss, the swordswoman, and any of the random NPCs. Okay. Definitely the yeah the sword lady. And the boss, wait, the boss is the rabbit now, right? The boss oh. is the rabbit. Oh, that's right. I have to roll, I have to roll again for the boss. Um, but no, yeah. the bo polymorph isn't a roll. It's just until they take damage. No, 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 but the boss has different stats now that it's a rabbit. So I have oh, to re-roll that 18. Like it's going to be better. Uh... I mean, it could be worse. Um, but the other two fail. There's no getting around that. I believe that the boss is probably going to fail as a rabbit. So, as a rabbit, do you want to know its wisdom? Sure. Probably a minus or something. How Nothing. wise or rabbit? It has no modifier. It's a four, it rolled a 14. It just barely failed. <laughs> well, it got polymorphed after it passed the Realtis thing. On the way. Oh, no. It... Yeah. Pretty much one NPC is not moving. I mean, not withheld. In the distance, you just see Siv kicking everyone's butts in the background. <laughs> Honestly, because you captured the head boss, Siv is just easily able to take these guys down. She was supposed to assist you. But it looks like you don't really need it. You guys just cheated this encounter. Um, <laughs> so is there anything you guys say to the remaining people that are still able to move? Get down on the ground. <laughs> yeah, I say look, I say Put look Put your out. hands behind your head. The young, the young horse is going to come down and kick this person. I okay. say non-lethal. Okay, roll your attack. Oh, that hits, since they only have a 15 AC. Okay. After taking everyone down, restraining them, capturing them, Siv in the corner just beating people up in the background, she actually managed to take down the guy that was messing with the machine. You did not see how. But he, she took him down quite swiftly. You can see the horse just flying in the air. Caitlin says... No, wait, Relta says, get down on the ground, hands behind your head. And then the horse just kicks this person randomly in the head, causing them to go down and seeing that this is a threat, puts their hands behind their head. You guys, <laughs> like actual cops, took care of this encounter so well. <laughs> we did a thing. We did a plan. <laughs> oh my god. In... And I'll just handcuff whoever's nearby me that's not yeah. strange. Halloween, when you basically handcuffed this last NPC that was coming towards you guys to attack, but yeah, they surrender. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after the boss is down, only one way out other than the window, and that thing's enforced. There's really no way of getting out of this without getting hurt. They didn't have a way out anyways. The boss just barricaded. That's why I said for everyone to just keep holding. Yeah. That's also kind of why the Wetworks team did that. To make sure and force his hand. They are well, a very I mean, good team. Lower level than us. But I guess they know what they're doing. 
They're lower Which level, yeah. What we're doing apparently. God damn, that worked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so at the end of the day, you guys capture everyone, take everyone out, and whatever King's doing, ah, uh, King, roll a d20, just a random d20. Oh, okay. That was an excellent. That is a d2. Uh... <laughs> um, whatever you're doing is going well. I'm kind of afraid to say that because it could be anything. <laughs> <laughs> but as in the... Hallie, well, that was an excellent uh, spell, very well timed. Mm -hmm. Like wiggly rabbit bag. So at the end of the day, with everyone holding person, rounding everyone up, you swear you've seen this pirate before. Um, I think I asked. Oh, he's over there, knocked out. You swear you've seen this pirate before. You round everyone up, get them hauled into the police station. As soon as that's over, Rorata gets a ping, a reminder about a strange map, and perhaps your next location, as we end the session for today. Yay. Yay.